Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. I was finally able to get my hands on the Unify Smart Sensor. I want to thank Richard, one of my subscribers, for sending me two of them. After he sent me them, they did become available in Canada, and I grabbed a few more. There are some requirements for the Unify Smart Sensor that you need to have for it to be able to work, and we will go into that. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find me on Twitter at MacTelecomN. And if you'd like to support the channel, the best way to do that is through our Ubiquity affiliate link, and I'll post that down below. Before we go into the limitations and what this smart sensor could do, let's go over to my desk and take a look at what comes in the box and how we would change out the battery for the sensor. And this is the box for the Unify Smart Sensor. On the side, we have the branding that says Smart Sensor, and it's a fairly tiny box. Let's get it open. Right on the top of the box, we have our smart sensor, and this thing isn't really too big, so let's pull that out. It has a plastic wrapping around it, so we're going to have to take that off. And then on the inside, if we pull this tab up, that's going to release the battery, and this will start working. On the back of the smart sensor, we have this adhesive, so we could stick it to the wall. You can also screw this into your wall if you'd like. We have this angled bracket, which also has adhesive. This would be if you're putting it in a corner of your house or your business to use as a motion detector, which we will put one in my living room and you'll be seeing that. We have the contact, which is actually a magnet. So if we brought this close to the smart sensor, it would stick to it. So if we're using this for a door open or close or a window open and close, we will need this part. Also, it has an adhesive on the back. On the side, we have a couple screws to put into our wall, and then we have our quick start guide. Below the quick start guide, we have this little tab, and this would give us the ability to pop off the back bracket of the smart sensor, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. And the last thing that comes in the box is these extra adhesives. So let's go ahead and get this smart sensor opened. So I'm just going to pull the tab off the top, and that will activate the smart sensor. You should be able to see the white flashing light, and that means it's not adopted into a controller yet. Now we're going to take off the back to get to the battery. We just need to get the tab opener that they gave us, put it in, and then pop it off. So if we're doing a battery replacement, we just need to pop out this lithium battery and replace it with another one. So that makes it very easy to get to. Also, if you want to change the brackets to this angled bracket, that's what we would need to do. We have to pop off the back tab and then place the angle bracket into it and then click down. And we could see the angled bracket is still on there. If you wanted to screw the mounts for the smart sensor onto the wall, you would also have to take off this back plate and there is a spot for the screw hole. So now let's go back to the computer, look at what this can do, and then we'll get one set up. And that's a look at the smart sensor. Now let's see all that it could do. There are still a few things that are missing. The smart sensor could do smart motion detection. So up to five meters or 16 feet maximum away. It has a magnetic entry sensor for door or window open and close. It's an accelerometer for a garage door open and close, which we're not going to take a look at in this video, but we will do that eventually. It also has a temperature sensor, a humidity sensor, and then it has an alarm sound sensor. They have this water sensor for detecting leaks and floods, but this currently isn't available yet. If we see below, it says require water sensor adapter accessory only available in three pack at general release, which we can't get these in a three pack yet. And our Bluetooth connectivity to our access point needs to be within 49 feet or 15 meters. Another requirement of having the smart sensor, you need to have one of their U6 access points. So either the U6 long range, U6 Lite, or the U6 Pro. And this smart sensor is $59 USD MSRP. Also, the smart sensor works with Unify Protect. So wherever you host that controller, whether it be a CloudKey Gen 2 Plus, a UDR, a UDM Pro, or a UDM SE, or their UNVRs. You need to run Protect to be able to use this. A couple issues I've seen people running into is getting their link bridge devices. So that's having our access points being able to bridge to these Bluetooth devices. Right now we're into my NVR and we can see my link bridge devices. We have two U6 Pros. The one is linked, which is in the office, and this other one is unlinked, and this is outside in that catio that I built. If we scroll over the status, it says unavailable, and it's saying managed by another console. If you're just running a UDM Pro, an SE, a UDR, 
or a standard cloud key gen 2 plus you most likely won't run into this issue but i'm running a udm se and a unvr pro originally i had my udm se protect running and that is where this u6 pro is currently linked to that's why it's saying managed by another console now we're on my udm se and we can see there's a bunch of different devices here most of them are offline but this u6 pro is showing linked and this is the one that we want to push over to my UNVR. How we do that, we need to uncheck this auto adopt bridge devices. And then we could see this remove option. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of these from my list. And after removing it from my UDM SE, we could see that it's available. So hopefully some of these smart sensors will link to the one downstairs as it will be closer to that. The smart sensor that we unbox, I'm going to adopt it from my computer and then we'll move it downstairs. This is going to be used as a motion detector. So we can see at the bottom in my Unify Protect UNVR that it's pending adoption. I'm going to click pending adoption and I'm going to give it a name. I'll call it living room motion. Beside the sensor details, we have camera pairing. Pair the sensor with the camera to associate them. You can view both elements together on the home page and access sensor reading while viewing cameras. I'm going to pair it with my AI360. And then we'll press next. Now this is where we need to tell the smart sensor what we want it to do. We have our motion and detection and then we could see our battery life. Right now there is nothing selected so it's saying a long battery life. But if we added all of these it would be a low battery life. For placement I'm going to have none and then for detect I'm just going to have it set to motion for this one in particular and then we'll press next it's telling us our motion detection area consider that the sensor will track motion in the shown areas and i'm pretty much going to have mine the same as this it will be in the top corner in my living room so we'll get 190 centimeters by about five meters it's showing us how to mount our sensor we want to have it vertically and now it is adding the sensor to protect now i'm going to bring the camera downstairs and we're going to get this mounted in the corner of my living room i'm also going to take out another smart sensor and we're going to put it on my front door for an open and close, a temperature sensor, and a humidity sensor. First, we need to take off the plastic cover to expose the adhesive and then put it onto our wall. Then we just push the smart sensor onto the wall and it will stick. If you're using a screw, you will have to screw it in. For my front door, we're gonna be using a brand new smart sensor. So we need to take the plastic cover off of it and then pull the tab for the battery. The same goes for the contact. And then we need to expose the adhesive and then stick it to the front door. Since this is a new smart sensor, we're going to have to adopt it into our controller and we'll do that on my smartphone. They do have this alarm option and it looks like they may come out with an alarm in the future. Our smart sensors are now installed and we need to add the one for my front door. We could see new device found and we're doing this from my phone. I'm going to press add and I'm going to name it front door. And now we need to tell protect what we want this smart sensor to do. The placement is going to be my door. And then the detect will be motion, temperature, humidity. And at the bottom, we have this alarm. I'm just going to select it for now, but I don't believe it has any functionality. It's going to go through the same steps again, showing us how to mount the devices. And this is what I wanted to show you here. It says alarm area, front door. Please take into account that the sensor should be within 20 centimeters from the source of the alarm. And I'm not too sure which alarm we could use for this. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments below. Or maybe Ubiquity is coming out with some type of alarm themselves. So now we're going to go back to my desktop and take a look at some of the settings. Now let's take a look at some of the settings of the smart sensor. I'm going to say my office door. Under overview, we could see the status of the door. Currently, my door is open. I'm going to shut the door and we will see that it says close. And now we could see that the door is closed. We could also see that less than a minute ago, there was motion and then that there is no alarm detected. We had told the humidity in the room is 40% and it's 24.5 degrees Celsius in this room. It shows us some information about the smart sensor, the model firmware, and then the uptime. It also shows us the name, the status, and then the battery. We have a sensor connection to bridge. That's our Bluetooth and it's at 62%. And it also shows us our hardware revision. If we take a look under detections, this is going to show us our open and close of the door as well as motion. So it will log it for us and we could go all the way back to three months. Under settings, we could change the name. We could turn on or off the LED. We could pair it to a camera if we'd like, and then we could have events to capture. Since I have a door, motion, humidity, and alarm and temperature, 
we could see that the battery life estimate is short. We could also locate, we could restart, and then we could unmanage the device. Also within our events to capture, we could set safe zones for humidity and temperature. So if we click set safe zone, this is for our humidity, it will be between 30 and 70% and you could adjust this to your liking. The next big thing for motion detection is to be able to get alerted, and we could set that up to either push out to our phone or protect application or through email. If we go to the settings wheel and then click on notifications, we need to make sure that we're selecting custom notifications and then go to activity. Under activity, we wanna select our sensors, and we could either configure it for all of our sensors or we could do them individually. I'm gonna do it on this office door. So this says inherit settings from all sensors and that's this top one here. So any setting that it has, it will push down to you. If you don't want that, you could turn it off and then you could customize it as you see fit. What I'm gonna do for this sensor is turn on motion detection, extreme value. So if we hit past 70% humidity and then I'm gonna have on low battery so that I know when it's time to change it. So now that we'll send your protect app or your email notifications when it notices any motion or whichever you've selected. Say we want to have it on a custom schedule. We don't want to be seeing these motion alerts all the time. We could see when to send and create a custom schedule. Now we need to create our custom alert. So let's set for Monday. I'm going to click on Monday at 12. I'll call this motion event. We're going to have the start day on Monday and then the end day at Monday. We'll have it at 12 a.m. till about 5 a.m. And we're going to have this repeat on every day of the week. I typically go to bed around then and wake up around them and then we'll press save. Now this way it limits the amount of notifications that you're going to get pushed to your phone. And if a notification does go off, you might have some activity going on in your home or business. So that's going to be it for this initial video on the smart sensor. When the other devices come out, I will do a follow up video. I am installing a bunch of these at a farm to capture temperature and humidity and I'll let you know how that works out. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you'd like to support this channel, again, we do have that Ubiquity affiliate link. If you're new here, subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.